Hey guys, OJ Obine here, bringing you guys our PMU season, oh my gosh, I forget what season, week two battle against Slick Panther and his Tip Town Timber. Slick is a good buddy of mine, he's a, uh, he's a member of my front office who helps me, uh, you know, grind out a lot of these matches um, pretty consistently, so big shouts to him, he's a phenomenal player. Um, I think I, I've talked about it in videos before, but Slick went from uh, when I first met him being, you know, a very, very, I don't think he'll, he'll get upset when I say this, being a very meh player. Um, to being a phenomenal player in like a year span going from being someone that you know You could usually farm win off of in uh, your friends league to being a DPL drafty and in XYZ big league So slick has uh, is one of the players. I've seen grow Exponentially fast faster than really I've seen anybody grow as a draft league player. So big shots to him I know he plans on starting to upload soon. So if he has a channel made, I will link it in the description. Please go give Slick a sub. Um, like I said, he's a great player, and I'm really excited to see him potentially make content. Because uh, I'm always here for more uh, Pokemon players creating content, especially great ones like Slick. So definitely go check him out. Now, we are going to do a quick little team builder just so you can see what we're bringing, why we're bringing it. There will be a timestamp in the description below if you want to go ahead and jump to that. But with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the team builder. Our team, if you did forget, is at the top of your screen. It consists of Weavile, Kamo'o, Zemus. Empoleon, Florges, Piloswine, Rotom Fan, Nihilego, Shaman, Slowbro, Pyroar, and Mega Alakazam. While Slick's team consists of Mew, Greninja, Comfe, Heracross, Rhyperior, Muck, Thunderous Incarnate with Zemus, Snorlax, Entei, Wishiwashi, and Mega Aggron. Biggest threats to me, in my mind, the biggest threat by far is going to be a Scarf Moxie Heracross. If you look at my team, I have good pivots into offensive fighting types. I do not have good pivots into offensive fighting types that have stabbed Megahorn on top of that. I think endgame Megahorn is so unbelievably free versus me. Um, it's insane. It's a Scarf that can outspeed Zam pretty easily as well if he wants to invest in that. And it honestly just rips through me in the end game if I'm not careful, especially with the team that I brought. So I'm really expecting that. Uh, mixed Life or Greninja with, you know, just like Dark Bolt, Skunk Shot, U-Turn, fourth move. Rips me. Absolutely rips me. Probably Ice Beam. Um, I don't think he really needs a water move in this matchup. So that one absolutely rips through me. It's going to be very, very scary. Thunders can get really out of hand quick. Mew is Mew, and I hate Mew because it's really hard to build for. And it always has a great set in every matchup. Mega Aggron's hard for my team to push through and break. It's actually genuinely obnoxious with, like, Toxic Heavy Slam Rock's fourth move. Um, and then what else is really scary? Thundee Eye can also get up pretty out of hand pretty fast. But... I think we have the team to potentially take on Slick, and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump into it. Now, I did lose my notes, so I don't remember exactly what all my EVs do, but they all have a purpose. I didn't just put them in random spots, just remember that. And PMU is a more relaxed league, so I'm, I don't feel as bad kind of forgetting what my EVs do, because I am playing this after, I am recording this after the fact. And uh, yeah, I just kind of forgot to write down my notes, I think. Um, but they all have a purpose. So first off, we're going to have our Mega Zam rocking out with the Alakazite, obviously, Magic, uh, not Magic Guard, Synchronize as its ability, or no, Trace. Blah, blah, blah. Trace is its ability. Side Shock, Focus Blast, Recover, Signal Beam. EV Spice, we got 148 HP, 4 Defense, 4 Speed, 212 Special Attack, and 140 Speed with a Timid Nature. Um, this Pokemon goes crazy in this matchup. It's very hard for Slick to deal with this Pokemon um, consistently. Now we have Signal Beam over Shadow Ball because I want a way to reliably hit Graham without clicking Focus Blast in its face. And I do still need Focus Blast for things like Aggron, obviously, and um, it actually chunks the hell out of Lax. It's not Shoppel. Um, but I want a way to reliably hit it without missing. And I figured Signal Beam would obviously be really nice for that because it also hits the Mew. And, um, you know, I might as well use Signal Beam while it's still moving the game. Now, we might lose out on, a, you know, a couple little rolls there against the Mew since we're not Shadow Ball. But I really feel like it's a worthwhile endeavor, especially being that we have a lot of hazard support to chip down Mew otherwise. And we can kind of just recover up on Mew pretty easily anyways, uh, depending on its set and things like that. So pretty excited for the Zam. I think it actually puts in a lot of work this game and that it at least pressures the hell out of Slick's team and he's forced to either bring Scarf Hera or Scarf Gren. I'm convinced. I don't think it'll be Scarf Thundee. Um, maybe, yeah, I don't think it'll be Scarf Thundee. I think Scarf Thundee is really bad versus me in all honesty. Uh, he should be Scarf Gren or Scarf Heracross. He could also be like a fat Spadef uh, Sucker Punch Mew. I've seen that a bunch of times to check Zam in uh, Gen 7 League so that could obviously be very scary as well but I think this Zam's pretty solid nonetheless. Next up, we have Nihilego rocking out with the Black Sludge. Beast Boost as its ability, Sludge with Stealth Rock, Grass Knot, and Toxic Spikes. EVs wise, we got 148 HP, 4 Defense, 108 Special Attack, 12 Super Def, and 236 Speed with a Timid Nature. This is going to be our main Comfy check, this is going to be our main Thunder check, and this is going to be a Pokemon that gets up Toxic Spikes. Now, I know I just said I'm scared of Heracross, and why would you give it guts? One, I think it's going to be Scarf Moxie for sure, but two, I think that the benefits outweigh the um the, the pros outweigh the cons in the sense that yeah i might make be making hair across a little bit stronger 
But Slick's team is very weak to T-Spikes, and uh, especially when his grounded poison is something shitty like Muck, I, he doesn't really have a grounded poison in my mind. So I figured uh, T-Spikes are gonna be very beneficial, Rocks are gonna be very beneficial. Um, his only removal options are things like Comfe, which I beat 1v1, things like Thundee, which I beat 1v1, and then potentially the Mew, and if he's defog Mew, exponentially less of a threat. So I'm actually uh, completely vibing with that. 100%. But this thing is going to be our main Thundee check. We always live two hits from it. I think that's what we've used before. We always uh, chew hits from Comfy, even if it's like hidden power ground, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, just an overall great mod. We are speed boosting too, which uh, can actually lend to a late game clean if we do sufficiently chip a ton of things. We need a ton of chip on some things. So uh, the, the speed boost is honestly just nice if he's, you know, like not Scarf Grin and we get a speed boost. He can't as easily come in and, you know, like force us out or revenge us or something like that. Next up, we have Weavile rocking out with the Life Orb. Uh, pressure as its ability, Knock Off, Ice Go Crash, Ice Shard, and Low Kick. EVs wise, we got 28 HP, 244 attack, and 236 speed with an item in nature. This Pokemon rips slick. It really does super, super well, especially when we start chipping down the Aggron. If we can get in the Low Kick range, he really does not appreciate Weavile in the slightest. Um, we can just throw free Knock Offs and Ice Crash and Ice Shards. Now, I wanted Pursuit, but I figured that Pursuit was much less valuable than the Low Kick that we could hit Lax slash. Um, what do you call it? Mega Aggron with, opposed to the potential of being able to trap Mew that could just be Colder anyways, plus Fighting Move or Vacuum Wave or something like that. So I figured it would honestly be better off for me just to have these four attacks and absolutely use this thing as a wall breaker. It gives me a Revenge Killer to Thundee. It gives me something faster than uh, realistically everything on his team, um, barring Scarfers and things like that. So this Pokemon goes absolutely crazy. Really excited to use Weavile this week. Next up, we got Slowbro rocking out with the Tanga Berry Regenerators. Its ability Scald, Psyshock, Calm Mind, Slack Off, Max HP, Max Defense, for Special Attack with a Bold Nature. Um, this Pokemon is going to be actually one of our uh, main lures to Heracross. It's actually one of our main win cons as well. With a T-Spike up, this Pokemon is so difficult for Slick to deal with. Um, he needs to have Toxic on something, and we have Heal Bell support in the back. So I feel like um, this team can actually, I mean, this set can actually just win the game on its own very, very easily. If we do find an opportunity to get those T-Spikes up and we do get a sub to like, you know, plus two to where Gren can't two a KOs is easy and things like that. And obviously Redem's a great ability and uh, this gives us a great Entei check, gives us a, you know, a solid wax pivot depending on what his set is. If he's like AV, we do beat that thing 1v1. Obviously Curse we have to be careful about. We beat Agon 1v1 if it's not toxic very easily as well. And um, yeah, that is going to be big bro this week. And Tangaberry obviously so we can take a Mega Horn from Heracross and hit it with a big side shock, which is great. Next up, is said clerical support is going to be floor just rocking out with the kebia berry moonblast wish protect and heal bow same thing as bro we are max max unfortunately just because i need to take care across it's as best as humanly possible we're kebia also because we need to, this is our main grand check uh Gren doesn't do a chaos unless it's specs and i don't really expect specs to come in this particular matchup um but the kebia and fist death is obviously so we can take gunk shots a little bit better um we take two water moves from it otherwise pretty pretty well we uh we can wish up a lot of our you know you know, more fat, annoying mons in the back pretty easily. Um, and then we can also heal bow off big toxics, which is genuinely amazing for the rest of our team. Now, obviously, Aggron's free on this Pokemon, but it's always free on it. Even if I get hidden power fire, I'm doing 20% tops. So I figured having the, you know, the clerical support would be a little bit better for things like bro if I end up getting toxic and things like that. Next up, we have our, or lastly, we have our Kamo oh, rocking out with the Dragonium Z. Uh, what, what ability did we run this week? Oh my gosh, I'm dumb. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Bulletproof is our ability. Outrage, close combat, poison jab, and dragon dance. 164 HP, 164 attack, and 180 speed with an atom of nature. This Pokemon, uh, while I don't think it'll win if Comfy's here, if Comfy isn't here, this Pokemon can for sure win on its own. Um, outrage plus close combat just rips through Slick's team 100%. Dragonium Z plus one Outrage should nuke pretty much any Mew. And then we have poison jab if we can catch the Comfy. If we get rid of Comfy or it doesn't come, then our combo can kind of just win the game on its own. It's a great mod to break through lax as well. Um, and it can set up on a decent amount in this matchup. It's, it's not really O-code by much other than something like Comfe or like a Dazzling Gleam Mew or like an offensively boosted Mew or something like that. So yeah, that's basically going to be our team. Um, I'll be right back with the matchup. All right, guys, here we are with the battle. You can see the six that Slick elected to bring. He went with the Greninja, the Mew, the Snorlax, the Thunderous, Incarnate, Comfe, and Mega Aggron. Now, there's a there's no hair cross here, which is crazy to me. Um, now I know I, I'm sure Slick has his reasons and things like that, but I was genuinely petrified of a scarf, Moxie, Mega Horn, Heracross. I think it just six sewed me as soon as I took a little bit of chip on my uh, on my floor, just and a little bit of chip on my Komo. -O, game over. Um, I just wasn't really beating that set very easily. So not seeing that, 
was genuinely amazing. Uh, we see things like the Comfe instead, as I think what I didn't really expect that ended up coming. Now, Comfe is definitely very annoying for our team if we lose Neolego, so we're gonna have to be a little bit more um, smart with our Neolego on how we play. We can't just lead it, get up hazards, and then you know, let it go down. We kind of really need to be careful with that thing. Obviously, the Thundee ended up coming too, so it's a great check to that. So, our Nihi's a little bit um, pressured in this matchup, but it's still definitely solid nonetheless. Now, going into the battle, um, I really do expect a Greninja lead, just because Gren leads, leads the best, honestly, versus everything on my team. It outspeeds everything, especially because I think it's probably going to be Scarf, in the sense that he didn't bring um, Heracross, and I figured that would be his Scarf in this matchup, and he needs a Scarfer. When you play Zam, you need a Scarfer. And uh, so I'm expecting it to be Scarf Grand lead. I feel like a U-turn should free on everything. And in my mind, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to lead Kamo and I'm just going to click close combat. Um, obviously, the comp base switch is very likely, but I don't want to risk it and click Iron Head on a Greninja's Ice Beams and like almost 2 it kills me because it's Sash or 2 it kills me or something like that. I figure that would be, you know, pretty unbeneficial. And I can still use this Komoto later. Now, again, I'm not going to set up right here because obviously the Comfe is sitting right there and it'll just revenge me. Uh, but I can throw off a close combat, gauge a little bit of damage on it, um, see if it's leftovers, what item it is, things like that. And just, you know, give myself a tiny bit of momentum as we do a good 25-ish percent as the uh, the Comfy does end up being leftovers. And this is fine. I can save my Komoto for later. I can save my Dragonium for later um, and really, really start to uh, break through his team with Komoto. Because again, he has this pivot, but it's not the greatest pivot in the world. As he, I am going to go into Neo Lego. Slick makes a good play, goes for a U-turn, grabs himself a little bit of momentum. There's no reason for me to stay in with my Kamo. That would have been an awful play, but it ends up happening. And right here, he's going to get out into his Aggron for free. And now, in, in mocks where I wasn't playing, you know, Thundee plus Comfe, I probably would have stayed in and got up my T-Spikes right here, in all honesty. But I felt as if uh, the Nihi was too uh, important for checking that Thundee, checking that Comfe and things like that for me to really just throw it away ASAP. So he's gonna go ahead and Mega Evolve, likely set up his rocks. And again, I could have made the risk and just traded hazards with him, but there's no reason for me to risk it in case he wanted to throw off a drawback free Heavy Slam or Earthquake or something like that, because realistically it wasn't too big of a deal for him to do so. So right here, he is gonna go for a Toxic. I believe I do just go for a Skull, trying to bait a burn on this thing if at all humanly possible, as uh, I am going to be poisoned right here. <laughs> But we do get a big skull off. And again, this isn't the biggest deal in the world because we are heal bell on our floor just. So we do have that cleric option to potentially be able to uh, get this toxic away so that Call Mind Slowbro can still potentially win in an end game um, in which it's, you know, not poisoned or anything like that. So we're going to see, we do end up snagging the burn on Agron, which is amazing. This thing has like negative offensive presence now at this point. And I'm genuinely not worried about it in the slightest. As yet, he is going to make the pivot out into his Greninja. I do make a double out, I believe, into my floor, just being that I figured it would be pretty likely. I don't think I really get anything to touch Gren. I figured an offensive switch on his end made a lot of sense, in all honesty. I am going to protect, though, because I do think that this thing is Scarf. Um, it doesn't really get any setup options that really scare me, and I don't think he's going to hard out. He already showed me U-turn. There's no reason for him to not U-turn. I just wanted to make sure that he wasn't locking into Gunk Shot, because if he Gunk Shots, I need to stay in a Moonblast, because this thing's a fat threat to me. Uh, and I think it's also nice that he didn't bring the Heracross, too, because... That means that he's most likely Scarf Gren. Um, and because he's Scarf Gren, it means he's not Mixed Life Orb. And Mixed Life Orb was genuinely terrifying. So I'm going to throw off a Heal Bell right here with my Floor just, just because, you know, I want that poison gone on my uh, my Slow Bro just so I can potentially win with Calm Mind a little bit later on, which is obviously really, really solid. And uh, yeah. So I'm going to switch out here. Despite it being burned, I don't want to take the hit. And I need to check the. Um, what do you call it? I need to check the. Uh, Grim with it later on as he is going to go for a toxic kind of switch I make the mid ground to my Kamo'o because I'm willing to use this thing to break right here and uh, Reason being I don't expect slick to go hard Comfe this time I feel like at this point he used Comfe as his original pivot and right here being that this is a burn mega Akron I'm poisoned I'm much more likely to go for an iron head or a poison jab or something like that to try and catch it and that'll chunk that thing Exponentially so what I'm gonna do right here is actually expecting a Mew pivot this time on a close combat slash like, you know those coverage moves I'm actually going to go for a Dragon Dance because I feel as if um, his best pivot is going to be Mew in case I do make that aggressive play this time. As I do call that play correctly, he is going to go into the Mew, which is genuinely amazing because we get that plus one DD up. And now from here, a, uh, a Z Outrage is going to chunk something. If it doesn't kill this Mew, it's going to put it incredibly low, which is great for our Zam. <laughs> And uh, great for our bro if it's like a stall breaker mute. And obviously this thing can't burn me or anything like that. But Slick's going to make a great play. He's going to scout for the Z move. He's going to go out into his Aggron. This is completely fair because he genuinely just didn't need this Pokemon anymore. So I am going to pop my Z. Unfortunately, a little tiny bit prematurely. 
But um, that was a good play by Slick, and that's why uh, that's part of the reason why I genuinely I enjoy Z moves. I know a lot of draft league players don't like Z. They think it was a you know a bad addition to the game back in Gen 7. But I think if done correctly, if done in a way that you know it's not freezy, you're only getting one or two captains, and one of them's a high tier model, one of them's a low tier model. I realistically don't think it's that big of a deal in the slightest, just because um, what do you call it? It adds another layer to the game that's not uncompetitive and unhealthy. Like. Forcing your opponent to scout for things like, or your opponent scouting for a Z move like that because they know you're gonna, you know, uh, click at that turn to knock out their uh, their check is, is really cool to see. So he's gonna make the uh, the pivot into his comb fit right here, saving his Akron for sack fodder most likely. Uh, no, if I would have clicked like Iron or something like that, would have been crazy. Uh, but it was in my best interest just to try to kind of attack what's in front of me because like. Yeah, this comfy can come in, but it's actually to a kill with close combat. And being how low I am because of the toxic, he's not really gaining that much health back. So I'm perfectly content with giving up my um, combo here to get into my Neo Lego just to um, set up like a T spike. Um, I, I believe I go for T spike first, just because things like Mew and Lax and things like that are genuinely obnoxious. So. The comfy's gonna get up to, you know, still a decent amount of health, unfortunately, but this does give me my free switch to my Neo Lego, which is kind of what I was looking for, especially with the Aggron super chipped. Um, Slick doesn't have great switch into Nihi at this point in time, so I am going to be able to get up a layer of hazards here as Domino's the Snorlax comes in. This is a smart play by Slick because he gets in before the T-Spike come in, depending on his set. Um, if he wasn't like a rest set, then uh, that was very, very important to get in before he, uh, you know, ended up getting toxic, but this is obviously terrifying. I don't have great uh, ways of beating this lax in all honesty uh especially that my kamo went down but i'm gonna go into my slow bro just because i feel as if my slow bro can set up on this thing because we are max physically defensive and i don't need it for anything else i also just need this thing to 100 chip this thing down i need it in range of a focus blast from my zam if i can get it in range of a focus blast from my zam i'm not in as awful of a position now obviously i would have to hit a focus blast at that point but i would have an out at the very least and i don't think anything else on my team really could uh help me achieve that so I'm gonna start clicking Calm Mind um, as he ends up throwing off a plus one body slam. And you're gonna see a, a pair would obviously be super unfortunate, but that plus one hit, there's a fat chunk right there. And I'm gonna throw off a big, big plus one scald, hopefully nabbing me a burn on this lax as we do, which is genuinely amazing. This is going to help us um, exponentially in trying to beat this thing down. Now, the way he cursed in my face like that makes me think he's most likely rest in my mind, especially after this turn when I see that, um, he is, I believe, not leftovers. Okay, so I didn't really know at that point if he was fresh or not. Because I was going to say, if he's if he's lefties, he's most likely not a curse. Um, you know, recycle set, obviously, because he doesn't have a berry. But what I can do right here, especially because he's getting slower, is start boosting up a little bit. Um, if he is rest, which he turns out to be, he's forced to rest here pretty soon. And if I can get up to plus three and get some good sleep talk rolls, I do three hit KO him with a plus three skull. Just because slow is pretty decently strong for a pretty fat and passive mon. So I'm going to get up to plus two right here. Um, it is my play to get up to plus three. I don't die to a body slam at this point, and I need to get up to plus three and then start throwing off some scalds. Now, if he is rest talk, I need to be careful. I need to kind of pray and hope on all honesty that he doesn't get the good sleep talk roll, as he is going to reveal to be sleep talk, as I'm going to take a little sip of my coffee because it's been a minute. And um, he's going to get rest, which is awesome for me. So I'm going to slack off. I'm not going to lie, kind of baiting and hoping that I get the sleep talk roll again. But again, I do live any uh, any hit from that thing. So I, I figured it was safe enough for me to do so. And being that he's at minus two, I believe, um, if he wants to curse anymore, he will be slower than me paralyzed. So that's obviously great. And he gets two rests in a row. That is really unfortunate for Slick. I do apologize. But, you know, it is a 33% chance it is uh, kind of the ris uh, the risky run when you run rest talk. So we're going to see this Lax wake up. It's going to go for a body slam here. Thankfully not nab the pair which is absolutely amazing i'm just gonna go for another scald now um i kind of do force him into a rest turn uh because we should two hit ko him or three hit ko him from this range with scald so he is kind of forced into said rest turn which is obviously awesome for me and the fact that i haven't seen a berry or leftovers or anything like that makes me think that he's most likely chopple berry for my alakazam throwing a fat focus blast um i feel like that's probably his best item in this instance if he isn't leftovers though the fact that he isn't leftovers makes it amazing for me in the sense that he isn't gaining residuals back to get out of range of three of my scalds. So he's forced into more rest than uh, he would, you know, really like. And if he doesn't get those sleep talk rolls, he's basically not hitting me at all. So I'm going to slack off here. We see that he's not to it KOing us really with, uh, 
with body slam and i believe after that slack off it's it should be a, i should be at a range of two of them again um even at plus two just because bro's fat has him on as i believe right here he is going to get a rest once again and i'm just gonna scald this should force him into a rest turn here 100 because we do two it ko him i don't think he can really do anything otherwise but he does go for uh, i do end up getting a crit here as he goes for a body slam now i understand that crit looks like it matters a bunch but i two it ko'd him anyways from the range he was at and i didn't oko with that crit I think Slick 100% should have rested there because then his Lax doesn't die to this next Scald, um, guaranteed, as it did. So thankfully, Bro is able to 1v1 that Snorlax, which is genuinely amazing for us. Um, the Mew's going to come in. It's going to get poisoned. And now what I'm going to do is I believe I'm just going to pivot on out. Um, no, I'm going to go. I'm going to stay in as it ends up going for Taunt. So it is more of a stall raking type Mew, which is definitely annoying. Not the biggest deal in the world. I did go for a Slack off there to see if I could, uh, you know, try and heal up a little bit, but... Not the biggest deal in the world, because honestly, if it wasn't Taunt Mew, I did just kind of potentially win the game. Though, he could have always just gone into a Stundee instead and just Thunderbolt me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pivot out into Zam in case that thing, uh, you know, nothing it can do can really 2-it KO me if it's defensive. Uh, I have a lot of, uh, I have a lot of bulk. Uh, especially in my super def so if it's special obviously you see that shadow ball bounces and that's in our pre mega form so we're actually uh kind of vibing at this point from here i can kind of just stay in and go in and click signal beam now uh signal beam instead of shadow ball does suck in this sense because of the fact that i don't have um what do you call it um as we're gonna trace it's uh trace super nice Signal Beam does suck in the sense that it's weaker than Shadow Ball, so I can't, you know, as easily twit KO this annoying fat Mew. But it's, uh, it was a risk I was willing, or it was a trade-off I was willing to make, uh, in the sense that I wanted to be able to hit the ground reliably as well. As I am going to recover, it's like it's just going to kind of stay and spam Shadow Ball here for a second. We see that it's not a twit KO, um, so I do feel comfortable, I believe, in this next turn. Just to go for a Signal Beam, just because I feel like it, um, it should twit KO this thing in most instances. As I am going to throw off said Signal Beam. Um, really, really chunk this thing down as it is going to be able to KO it after poison for sure as Slick just off one more Shadow Ball. And, you know, I should be fine because I do live this, but we are going to get a little bit chipped right there. Um, not the biggest deal in the world, though. Zam health isn't the most important thing, and honestly, Zam isn't the most important member on our team. Now, it's nice for a non-Scarf Thundy just to outspeed it and revenge it. Not the biggest deal in the world, though. I'm going to get a little bit greedy, though, and try and recover up, especially if it covers him wanting to go for a soft boil on me, not attacking him, or, uh, you know, anything like that. And he can obviously just die to poison as well. I can get it back a little bit of health, but my greediness is going to bite me in the ass. I'm going to get crit there. Realistically, I probably should have just um, signal beam there and gotten rid of this Mew right here on this spot, but not the biggest deal in the world in all, honestly. Just probably would have been my better play overall if that makes any sense so right here i am going to go out into big neo lego on a bike and pretty much force a ko now the agron is um obviously immune to my sludge wave i'm only sludge wave grass knot on this set but it does die to um what do you call it grass knot after this burn now it is obviously a steel type and resistant and probably pretty spadef but max spadef was for sure in range of a grass knot at this point and uh, Slick just doesn't have pivots into Nihilego at this point in time. Just realistically does not have any pivots into it. So I am going to go for a Grass Knot. Be able to pick off this, uh, be able to pick off this Aggron. And put myself in a pretty, pretty good spot. I'm going to see the speed boost is going to pop. And the speed boost is awesome because we essentially force him into, um, what do you call it, Gren. Now, obviously, Gren would just be his best play regardless. But, um, you know, if it was like a physical Thunder or something like that, it could have came in Revenge just pretty easy. Whereas opposed uh, to that, we get this poison on this ground and we have, you know, pretty decent pivots around the ground. So I am going to pivot out, I believe, out into my floor. Just um, obviously a risky play, but I am Kevia. So if he wants to go for the gunk, I know he's locked into that at the very least. And I can pivot right back out into my Neo Lego. As a Dark Pulse does come out, it's going to honestly kind of just barely chip me down at all. And everything that I want poisoned at this point is pretty much poisoned. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty content at this point. I believe Paradise comes out, which should be that Comfey, which is awesome. This thing's going to get poisoned as well. So that, that yeah, that, that gives all three Pokemon that are, uh, what do you call, on the ground are poisoned at this point. So I'm going to be able to throw off a big, big wish. Now, I want to keep this thing healthy um, because of the fact that Gren is actually probably Slick's best way of winning. And if my, uh, my floor just gets chipped, Water move can clean through me at the end. Dark Pulse can clean through me at the end if he ends up getting rid of it. As Slick is going to go for a Heal Bell. Now, this is interesting in my head. I was thinking maybe he's Calm Mind Heal Bell. U turn draining kiss, but then I was like, ah, I still beat him with my um, my Nihi. As I do throw off a moon blast here, just in case he did want to like call mine or something like that. If you do throw it off, we're able to chunk this thing down pretty heavy. 
and uh, get back up to full with our wish. And from here, I'm just gonna pivot right back out into my Nihilego because this thing obviously just cannot really touch me. Um, if Slick doesn't have Defog, which you're gonna see he does end up having Defog, he's uh, he's either gonna Draining Kiss or just U-turn here um, or Synthesis up to get back a little bit more healthy. Uh, but he does go for the Defog, which is definitely annoying because of the fact that I can't, um, you know, the things in the back that I was, you know, just all happy that po were poisoned aren't poisoned anymore. Though it also makes it to where rocks aren't up on my side of the field, which I think is genuinely amazing for me. So, Slick is going to take a little bit more health back with his leftovers. I believe I do end up actually getting my rocks here, just in case I wanted to rake a Sash from Thundee, um, chip down that Gren, things like that. I figured it would be just a little bit nicer. Now, he makes an aggressive switch hard into his Gren. Um, maybe I should have Sludge Wave there, just because it pretty much netted me a KO at that point. But I'm not, I'm not in too, it's not too big of a deal right here, so... We see the Grand come in. I am going to pivot right out into my floor just now. Hindsight, 100% should have just sacked off Slowbro. Slowbro didn't do anything in the rest of this game. Slowbro had no purpose at this point. I should have sacked off Slowbro to see exactly what he wanted to get into. 100%. I got a little bit aggressive and went to my floor just because I was like, ah, you know, I'm fine. He's Scarf Grand. But uh, Slick ends up clicking Gunk Shot here. Oh no, he ends up clicking U-Turn. I'm a little bit ahead of myself, so still a good play by Slick. He's going to be able to nab a little bit of momentum. Not the biggest deal, especially being that I have rocks up now. I'm at least able to chip these things down and, uh, you know, put them in a, a spot where they're at a little bit lower of health. So I am going to go into, uh, he's going to go into his Mew as I believe I'm going to pivot out in my Weavile. The reason I'm going to pivot on my Weavile is I feel like he's forced into a recover turn. If he doesn't recover and he attacks me or if he taunts me or something like that, I can just pursue him the next turn or I shard him. I don't die to a vacuum wave from full. For some reason, he is a vacuum wave set. I, I never die to a vacuum wave from full. So this essentially was just a very, very free knockoff and a free KO. And there wasn't really a Pokemon on Slick's team that he could allow to be knocked off at this point. Mo honestly, his most, his most expendable member was probably this Mew or maybe... Yeah, this Mew, maybe Thunderous or anything like that, but he is going to actually pivot out into the Comfey. Um, giving me the Comfey, this thing is going to drop, which means the, my rocks are here up to stay for this, uh, you know, short end game, which is genuinely amazing for things like Fundy. Um, obviously, I can't be Draining Kiss now, so if he is Vacuum Wave and a Draining Kiss to deal with Weavile on his Mew plus Comfey, I don't have to deal with that anymore. Um, I think I get, like, as long as I'm above, like, 70-ish percent, I should be out of range of the Vacuum Wave. And right here, Gren's going to come out. I think this is the play in which I go out in the floor just to just, like, click Skunk Shot. And I get a little bit ahead of myself as I probably should have sacked my slow bro. But um, we're going to see. We're going to get bailed because he's going to actually end up missing. Um, this turn, I am just going to click Moonblast. I am I am Kevia, so I obviously would have lived that. But it would have put me in a tough spot to where I would have had to been a little bit more scared pivoting around this thing and things like that. So I am just going to throw off a big, 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 big Moonblast uh, and be able to really, really chip this thing down. It is a 2 KO potentially. Uh, but I am going to switch out just because the thing is Sludge Wave. I don't want to be in rage of a Gren, um, of a Gren, uh, water move. Because water move can always be scary in the end game. So he's going to go for a Thunderbolt. This is fine. I don't think he's going to look psychic in the face of my floor. Just, um, I absolutely chew that up for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, as you see. And I'm just going to be able to throw off a fat, fat Sludge Wave as it's like just throw off one more Thunderbolt. Thankfully, I don't get paired and, uh, I'm going to be able to throw off a big Sludge Wave and knock this thing out, which is, uh, again, genuinely amazing. Now he's pretty much uh, forced into his Gren. Um, he's forced into his Gren in my mind just because of the fact that, uh, you know, it's the best uh, it's the best way to potentially revenge this thing. Obviously, his Mew is uh, is not, as he is actually going to go into said Mew. And um, in my head, I figured that Gren would be a little bit better. I know that he's a little bit scared to lock into a move, but Mew can recover up on all my passive Gren pivots. So I figured he would go into... Um, Going to Grand and pressure me offensive that way, but he's going to go into Mew. And at this point in the match, I don't need Nihilego anymore. Um, he only has Mew and he has Thunderous. So realistically, my best play is to stay in and spam Sludge Wave just so that I can just, uh, what do you call it? Continuously chip this Mew down. If it ends up being like Psychic, I actually do uh, potentially live from this range too. If it's not like Psy Shock or Physical Move or anything like that, I chew a hit from this thing from this range too. And it's just, there's no benefit to me saving Nihilego other than trying to save Diff. And I won't choke away a game just to save Diff week two when I lost week one pretty heavily. So um, I am just going to stay in Spam Sludge Wave as Slick is actually going to make an aggressive double into the Gren expecting me to pivot out and i understand why he did this i understand he was you know on the back foot pretty heavy at this point in the game but like i said i have no reason to save my nihilego whatsoever i have genuinely no reason to save it so my best play is always stay in click sludge wave until i die 
make sure things are super chip. But then Nilego ends up getting another speed boost and it knocks out the Gren. And this pretty much all but seals our victory in this matchup. Uh, reason being, I obviously always have my Weavile to come in and revenge this thing afterwards. And I just click Sludge Wave until uh, the end of time with my uh, with my Nilego. So, uh, realistically, it should never be above range in which Knockoff doesn't knock it out from here. So we're going to see a Psychic pop off from this Mew. We are going to actually end up living due to the one turn of Black Sludge that we got prior. So we probably did die to the original Psychic, but we end up wanting to go for that. But honestly, completely fine with me. I'm going to be able to click Sludge Wave one more time, and we're going to get a Neo Lego sweep, um, which is funny because that wasn't this Neo Lego's purpose at all. And actually in Mox, this was actually usually our most expendable member, depending on the team that Slick brought. But um, I think he just ended up bringing a pretty Neo Lego weak team when he ended up letting the Lax go down, things like that, and uh, when the Aggron got burned really early on. So I think uh, he might not have, you know use these uh these pieces that he needed to check nihi as well and even though i was a pretty fat um you know hp invested nihi with speed boosting nature uh with a with a speed boosting in my like in my beast boost showing how little i really was invested in my special attack um he ended up just kind of putting himself in a bad position in the end game and stuff like that obviously the gunk shot mess did suck um and he got very unlucky with sleep talk rolls so i'm very fortunate for that he's just like um, I know he plans on starting to upload soon, and um, I will for sure link him in the description if he has a channel yet. Um, if not, um, when he does make one, I'll link it here, and definitely go check out Slick. He's a phenomenal player. He's someone that's, over like the year and a half I've known him, has come up exponentially from, and I don't think he'll be upset when I say this, going from being like a very bad player, someone who's not very good, to being like incredibly good. Being like, you know, a, a DPL drafty and, you know, playing in X team tour and X league and doing really well. So this looks an absolute stud. Please go check him out if he does have his channel. And I'm sure when he does, you know, I'll like to upload, it'll be great content. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, drop a like. If you're new here, be sure to drop a sub. We're pushing towards 500. I'd really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.